So I need to add some weight to the back of the uh, tractor here and I've got the perfect piece of steel that I think is going to work really well for this. This is a block of steel that I purchased from uh, my friend Andrew, Blacksmith Tools. It's five inches thick, 10 and three quarter inches wide, 60 inches long. I calculated it right at around 940 pounds, give or take a few pounds probably. But I think this is gonna work good for a counterweight. So I definitely gotta add some weight to the rear of the tractor here. I've got the fork attachment on the front right there. And actually before I turned it around here, I lifted this piece up to uh, test it. Actually the first time that I actually picked anything up with it and it took everything it could to lift this up without trying to tilt the tractor forward. So I think this is gonna work well for a counterweight. So this is my plan is to go ahead and tackle this and get this mounted on there so that we've got some good counterweight. I went out, I had to go out to the Kubota dealership this morning to uh, pick up the registration for the uh, side by side. And I went ahead and got these pins while I was out there. So these are the kind of pins that you usually find in all the implements that you get, you know, a, a rear brush cutter or box blade, you know, all that stuff. I did get the pin for this guy too. And of course it's the wrong size. This is a three quarter inch spherical uh, bearing. These are, be these are seven eighths. And um, I thought I had the right one, but anyway, I can make a pin for that. I think it's a pretty straightforward project. I'm probably gonna go find me some material. I haven't rounded anything up yet, but I do have some, some uh, flat bar, some thick flat bar that maybe I can use to uh, cut out some ears, maybe torch out a, a couple of ears that we can weld to the plate here. So maybe have a couple of ears that are coming up and uh, weld those on that these pins will actually be bolted into. And in the center, I just got to come up with something else that I can um, raise this up. So when I was out there at the dealership this morning, I took some pictures of some of the, the uh, brush cutters and there was actually a, um, a rear mounted uh, fork attachment where you can pick up pallets on, on the back. And uh, the measurement that I got from here and up was about 20 inches. So I just got to come up maybe with a couple of flat bar brackets or something that raise up and uh, get it up so that we can attach this one here as well. Uh, my first time dealing with a three point system on a tractor, I've never been, really been around this stuff. So it's all new to me and I'm learning it. It is all adjustable. You've got these uh, clevises here that you can adjust in or out, right and left hand thread so that you can get everything centered on the height and uh, you know the in and out spacing there as well. This one is adjustable also. All this is adjustable. This side's fixed. This side's made so that you can adjust it so you can get both of these bars at the right elevation to line it up. So anyway, this is the project that I'm gonna work on and I think this is gonna work pretty good. It has a good counterweight. And I may, I may even see about having the, the dealership go ahead and add the, uh, the liquid to the tires. That was another modification that I wasn't aware of until after I got the tractor. I had some of my viewers tell me that uh, that's a, a really popular modification that people do is add liquid to the tires whether it be water with antifreeze I, I saw that the beet juice is a popular thing um, but when i talked to the salesman this morning that's a service that they offer i think they charge you a half hour labor per tire to uh, fill them up with water so i might take it out there at another point and have them do that so this is the project i'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on it and i'll bring you along for the ride okay here's what i come up with so far for the uh, three-point hitch so the center piece, I got this piece of two and a half inch tubing. I think I'm gonna use that. This was left over from the uh, front mounted motorcycle rack that I made. And what I can do is just go ahead and um, just like notch out one side of that, which would be the front here, so that the uh, spherical eye can fit down in there. And then we'll just have the pin go through just like that. So I have a hole drilled. This will slide down into the tube and we'll just weld that on down there. This is not the length, it's gotta, I gotta figure out the height and then cut it off and then do the uh, mods on it. So for the uh, bottom two ears, I think I'm gonna use this piece of flat bar right here. This is a piece of three quarter by eight flat bar and I'll just go to the saw and probably just cut me two strips out of this 
may shorten it a little bit. I don't know if I need them eight inches tall. We may trim them to maybe about six inches and then uh, drill the holes in it, maybe burn a radius on one end, make it, make it look nicer, clean them up, and then those will be the ears that get welded on right here. All right, we got the flat bar up in the saw. I'm gonna cut two slabs three inches wide out of this piece right here. So we've got the first one set and uh, we should be ready to go. This piece of flat bar sitting here just to help dam the coolant up right here from coming over and falling out onto the floor. So that should make it just drain right back down into the uh, catch pan underneath the saw here. Hopefully, I think it's trying to come out from underneath it. All right, repeat that one more time. Nothing critical at all about the center of this uh, whole location right here. So I'm just, I've got a couple of square butts here set and I decided I'm going to go six inches from the bottom and I'm actually going to mill one side of this just to where it's flat because this is a hot rolled finish. And That'll be it right there. And we, what we may do, I may just trace a radius up here just to kind of make those look nice. And I forgot my center punch. Let me go get that. I like using this uh, spring-loaded center that's got more of a fine tip to go ahead and initially get the center like that. And then I go in with the center punch line up there and do that just like that. We're just gonna line that up with a center pointer in the middle and drill a hole. Not quite. I'm gonna take another five. And that should clean it up there. That's a three-quarter inch roughing end mill right there. Yep, that's a lot better than it was right there. So what we're gonna do, I got a zero set right there. And I have a stop set and we'll just go up back up to that zero and Middle to bottom, they'll both be the same height. Just doing that because the, this is a hot roll plate, so the edges are more rounded than square. That's all they need right there. So we'll set up and then go ahead and drill our holes. 
All right, so just a simple centering using my, uh, my center pointer right there. We're lined up on our punch mark. That's going to be plenty close enough. I'm going to start off with this half inch vortex drill. We'll put a half inch hole down through there and then we'll finish it off with our 7 8 diameter drill bit right here. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get this uh, a little bit far away from it, but I'm going to go ahead and do this right here. We're going to use our cool mist to keep the drill bit cool. Yep, I saw it lifting there. I didn't have the device very tight, so let me, ugh, let me tighten it up again there. And now I don't have the belt tight enough back here. <laughs> There we go. I'm just applying way too much torque on it today. I'm, I'm trying to hurry through this and it's not working out too well. All right, seven eighths. I measured, that's the diameter of our threaded portion of our pin. That's working out good. All right, one more to go. That's it, right there. Just doing some initial test fitting here, just seeing what everything's gonna look like once it's together there. I think I still will probably go ahead and, we'll just go ahead and radius those corners right there, just to kind of make it look a little, a little bit neater. I think that's what we'll do. But that's what it's gonna look like right there. Of course, we'll get them welded in. We'll put some nice heavy weld beads around the bottom right there. I think that's gonna work out pretty good. I think the height's gonna work there too. See, we're still not all the way down the ground and we're still gonna have plenty of lift here to pick that thing up, get it up off the ground. All right, so next up, we'll go ahead and notch those and get them cleaned up, uh, ready to go. And then we'll move on to our tube and getting it notched out that, like we need. So we're just gonna radius the corners. I'm going to use that with a torch. So this piece of three inch OD tubing right here. Just uh, simple. I'm going to clamp it down. I'm just going to take the soapstone. Just draw a radius on it like that. Make that work. We'll go set up the torch and we'll just notch that off there. I haven't done any plate burning in quite a while, so I'm sure I'm gonna be nice and rusty at this. But we're gonna be using my uh, small uh, Smith torch right here. We'll get it set up and hopefully it'll just be a nice straightforward radius cut right there on both of them. Sounds pretty good. Too soon.
like I said, I'm a little rusty. I actually used to do this all the time. I mean, it was a weekly thing. I was burning out steel to make parts. And when you do it every week all the time, you get good at it. And I loved cutting out the real thick steel. Ah. Uh, yeah, see, I screwed that up. Plate moved on me. Put a clamp on it like I should have had. Just got to get it preheated. When you see it starting to get hot, you and then just rotate it on your finger here. Just like that. So, not the best. Not the worst, but I'll take the grinder and we'll just go ahead and dress that to kind of make it look even. I'll grind that and uh, make it look better too. <laughs> I've definitely done a lot better than that before. All right, there's our mock-up of the uh, completed ears that we just uh, dressed to clean up. There's the other one right there. And I just got them kind of mocked up there. They're not in the exact location. Uh, so those are done. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and move on to the tube right here. I wanna get this thing notched out and drilled so that uh, we can put our spiracle in, in there. And uh, it's probably gonna be, end up being about the height that it is now. Because the way I had measured one of the implements over at the uh, dealership was there was, a, there was about 20 inches from that hole up here to this hole. So we're probably going to try to maintain about what we got right there. So we'll go ahead and start on this tube now. I'm gonna square up the end of this tubing just like I did the plates there so that I know when I set it down, it's gonna sit nice and square just using this three quarter inch roughing end mill. Just wanna clean up the cut just in case the cut wasn't nice and square.
making some good progress on our uh, parts here for the three-point hitch. So we've got our tube just about ready, <clears throat> excuse me, just about ready to weld on there now. So the one thing that I did overlook was the placement of the hole. I was thinking that it would just be right in the center when in fact it really should have been offset more towards the front just a little bit. So the, uh, the outside of the uh, spherical housing right here, I had to dress it off just a little bit with the flap disc there to get it to clear. And I did that because I didn't want to have to remake this. This is actually the only piece of that tubing that I have. It was the best thing I had here on hand right now to do that. So I just, I just dressed that a little bit, just took a little bit off the end of it so it'll clear. Probably got to do it just a little bit more. So this was, uh, I'm going to use this piece of three quarter stock to make the pin. This is the one that I bought from Kubota. You know, this is the kind of stuff that really just bothers me. I go all the way out there to Kubota to get the proper pins for a three point hitch to a place that sells this stuff every single day. And I said, what pins do I need to uh, hook up an implement on the back for a three point hitch? And they went over to the shelf. They said, this is the ones you need. So these two are right, right here. And they said, this is the one I need. Well, this is, I didn't have calipers when I didn't have no way of measuring. I just looked at it and I said, okay, that looks good. And it's obviously the wrong size. This is seven eighths. This is a three quarter. So the top uses a three quarter pin. So, I mean, my point is these guys sell these parts every day and yet they sell me the wrong part. So I'm not going to spend another hour driving across town to take this back to get another pin. I'll just make a pin. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this off. I've actually got an extra uh, small eye bolt, 5 16 eye bolt, which is kind of an oddball size. And I'll drill and tap the end of it so we'll have a little eye bolt on one side. Drill the other side, put a cotter pin or a bolt on there to keep it centered, and, and uh, that'll be it. That'll work. It's just really grinds my gears that this kind of stuff happens right here. I don't even have the appropriate cotter pins I need to do this without having to, you know, take a trip down to a store somewhere. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this. We got quarter inch bolt, quarter inch bolt. And then this is not even necessary, but I'm going to do it. This is what I was talking about earlier. I've got several of these little 5 16 eye bolts that I bought for like nothing at the flea market years ago. So I'm going to tap the end of that. I'm going to cut some of this thread off and just screw that eye bolt into the end of that. Now that'll, that'll give you a nice little ring to, to pull the uh, pin out whenever it's ready. So that's what we're going to do and that'll get us by for now. And it'll probably, it'll probably end up being a permanent fix anyway, you know. Nothing uh, ultra precision about what we're having to do right here. I've just got a center distance marked on there and I'm using a stubby drill. I've got my parallel pulled back out of the way. There we go. I am gonna go to the lathe. I'm going to cut a nice bevel on the end of this to help line it up and then drill and tap the end of it for the eye bolt. All right, so here's our little crude shop made uh, pen system that I've just finished up. This is uh, what we're gonna do, just like this. Washer on that side. And since I don't have any cotter pins, I'm just gonna use these uh, quarter inch bolts to hold it in place, just like this right here. That's it. And see, so we got our eye bolt there so we can pull it out easily. So whenever I'm around uh, a good selection of cotter pins and uh, lynch pins, Later on, I'll pick up some and maybe replace these bolts with some actual cotter pins so we don't have to worry about these nuts working out and this falling out with the vibrations. But this will definitely work for now. So now that we got our pin done, 
uh, our next phase is to move on to the welding. So we need to get all of the uh, areas that we're gonna weld dressed really well. And uh, get, I'm gonna put this up on my saw horses and get ready to weld this thing in. We'll see if the little Kubota can handle picking it up and uh, set it on these saw horses so we got a manageable height there that we can uh, prep it and do all of our welding. really concerned about this thing trying to tip if I lift it up too high I could grab the, uh, the hitch on the back and pull it and it was trying to raise it up there so I think with my weight sitting on it is where I need to be to actually pick this up I might have to get Abby out here to help me to slide these things in here while I'm sitting on the tractor uh, before I pick this thing up I don't want to get it up too high and then this thing come crashing down. So uh, I'm just trying to be as safe as I can about this. Quickly finding out why it's important to have counterweight on the back of the tractor. So I'm ha I need counterweight to build the counterweight for the tractor. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. All right. Like you need scissors to open the scissor. Yeah, exactly. That has got to be one of the hardest layers of scale I've ever tried to grind off. Man, that stuff is thick and it is hard. I'm gonna try a fresh grinding wheel and see if that helps cut through there a little better. Seems like it's actually clogging the wheel up and it's not wanting to cut very well. worked a little bit better that stuff is just so thick and hard man and I have to good have a good wheel to uh, cut through it that uh, 3m silver is doing pretty good though
All right, guys, I think we got this ready to start welding. I've been uh, taking my time, getting it all laid out, getting everything clamped up. We're using our fireball tool, mega squares here. This is the big boy mega square. These are the mini mega squares. I like using those because when you clamp it up, it allows you to get in here and weld up inside the clamp area there as well. Everything should be ready to go. And I'm decided I'm going to be doing some stick weld on this. We're going to be running some 7018s. We'll use the old school Miller, Dad's old Miller, and uh, just run some run some electrodes to get this welded in. I did want to point out that I've been using my uh, LA Square. I got this from uh, Jody uh, Weldmonger store. These work really well whenever you're laying out uh, structural steel, just you know tubing that's got these radiuses on there. Just like this piece of steel, it's got this big radius on there. And because the square is so wide, you're able to, you know, put it up against the edge and, and do your layouts like, you do, uh, like you're like you supposed to be able to. The uh, the normal square butts that you use in the shop aren't as good when you got these big radiuses on there like that. So this is a good tool to have in your box right there. So it worked out really well. So everything's looking good. I think we are just about ready to go. We're gonna start burning some rods in and getting this thing done. <laughs> 